Hello there, Mr. Sutton here, bringing you the AB Calculus Chapter 4, Quiz 2, Review Solutions on Concavity. For this problem, we're trying to figure out all the intervals where this function is either concave up or concave down. To get this started, we need to analyze the second derivative and see where it's positive or negative. So let's take a first derivative. So using our power rule here, we've got, uh, let's see, for this first one, we have 4 times 1 12th. That's 4 twelfths, or 1 third x to the third power. Next we have, let's see here, this is going to be 15 over 6, uh, so that reduces to 5 over 2 x squared, and we're subtracting that. Next we have minus 14 x, and then that 10 is a constant, so that's just going to be gone. All right, we need a second derivative now. So we have 3 times a third, that's going to be just 1 x squared. And then for this next one, 2 times 5 halves conveniently gives us just minus 5x. And then finally, this negative 14x is now a negative 14. So at this point, we're going to do some side analysis. To do that, we need to find our critical values, the places where f double prime equals 0. Fortunately, this is one of those where it looks like we can pretty quickly factor this thing. So uh, two numbers that multiply to negative 14 and add up to negative 5, that would be positive 2 and negative 7. So we can rewrite this as uh, x plus 2, x minus 7 equals 0. And then we see that this is all going to equal 0 when x equals negative 2 or positive 7. So let me make an f double prime number line now with critical values of negative 2 and 7. And we're going to do a little sign analysis around those. So for this first interval over here, I'll use negative 3. Anything less than negative 2 will work, though. So plugging that back into this uh, factored double derivative, we have a negative 3 plus 2 is a negative. Negative 3 minus 7 is also a negative. Negative times a negative is a positive. Next, let me find something between negative 2 and 7, like 0. And that gives us a positive and a negative. So uh, that's negative overall. And then finally, something bigger than 7, like 8, that's going to be a positive times a positive gives us a positive. So we are concave up on the intervals where f double prime is positive. So on the interval from negative infinity to negative 2, union the interval from 7 to positive infinity. And then we're going to be concave down on the intervals where f double prime is negative, so this middle interval between negative 2 and 7. On this problem, I want to figure out the intervals where this function, 10 over x to the fourth, is concave up or down. So to figure that out, we need to analyze the second derivative to see where it's positive or negative. Before we can do that, though, we need to take the second derivative and also the first derivative. Uh, to make my life, my life a little bit easier, I'm going to rewrite this with a negative exponent. So I can rewrite this as 10x to the negative fourth. This makes it a little bit easier to use the power rule and take the first derivative, which is going to be negative 40x to the negative fifth. And then taking one more derivative to get that f double prime, we're going to have negative 5 times negative 40, giving us 200 x to the negative 6. Now to analyze this, I'm going to just rewrite this with a fraction, so 200 over x to the 6. And I'm looking for critical values if I'm going to do sign analysis, so places where f double prime is either 0 or undefined. Now since this is a fraction with a non-zero value in the numerator, a, a constant, that's not zero, there's no way this thing is ever going to equal zero. However, uh, this will be undefined if x equals zero, because you would have zero to the sixth downstairs. So since f double prime is dna at x equals zero, that is a point you could do some side analysis around. Before we go ahead and, and go to all that trouble, though, I'm um, just taking a look at this fraction. We have a positive in the numerator. The denominator, we just have a, a even exponent. So really, no matter what values I plug into x, this is always going to come out positive no matter what. Except if I plug in 0, then it's going to come out undefined. So we can say that for x not equal to 0, f double prime is always positive. Therefore, we are going to be concave up from negative infinity to 0 and from 0 to positive infinity. Since this can never be negative, since f double prime is never negative, uh, that means that we are going to be concave down nowhere. On this problem, we're trying to find and justify values of inflection points for this function. And this is just using the function that we already looked at in number one, part A. Um, so 
in order to figure out if you have inflection points, first off, to be an inflection point, the point needs to exist on the function. Since this is a polynomial, any point on this function is going to exist. There's nothing weird like that going on. Um, we also need there to be a sign change in f double prime. So the good news is we already did sign analysis for this very function in part a. Here's that sign analysis again. So looking at this, we see that f double prime is changing signs at x equals negative 2 and also positive 7, and those are the only two spots. This tells us that f has points of inflection at x equals negative 2 and positive 7. For this problem, we're trying to find and justify x values of inflection points for 10 over x to the fourth. This was the function we looked at in number 1, part b. Um, so just like with the, the other problem there, we need to figure out if this changes, if f double prime changes sign anywhere, and also if the function even exists at those places where we're changing signs. Um, so just to review what we saw in number one part B, we saw that f double prime after we analyzed this was positive everywhere except for x equals zero, where f double prime was undefined. So if you're positive everywhere except this one spot, you're not changing signs. Since f double prime is not changing signs anywhere, this allows us to conclude that it has no inflection points. But let's just uh, follow this up with a, with a quick question. What if we had discovered that f double prime did change signs at x equals 0? What then? So even if f double prime did change signs, we know that the original function, 10 over x to the fourth, is undefined at x equals 0. Um, so that means that you still would not have a point of inflection because, quite simply, you would not have a point that was on the function at x equals 0. For this problem, we are given the graph of f prime, the derivative of f, between negative 2 and 5, and we want to know on what intervals f, the original function, is decreasing. So if f is decreasing, that's saying basically it has a negative slope, which is also saying that it has a negative f prime. So all we have to do to answer this is look on our graph and see where f prime is negative. Now looking here, we're, we're positive for most of this, but we see that f prime is negative between 3 and 5. This tells us that f is decreasing on the interval from 3 to 5, which is going to give us answer choice C. Now, if you're looking at this and seeing these brackets here, um, you actually could express this with or without brackets. It's kind of up for debate whether we include the endpoints on this increasing, decreasing stuff. Either of those answers would be acceptable. And this is the only answer with 3 and 5 in it as the only answer anyway. For this problem, we're given the graph of f prime, and we want to know where f, the original function, has a local minimum. So be careful. It's tempting to say, oh, we have a local min at x equals 3. Uh, well, that's the local min for f prime. We want the local min for f. To figure that out, we need to know where f is changing from uh, decreasing to increasing, where it's kind of hitting bottom and going back up. Another way of saying this is we're trying to figure out where f prime is changing from negative to positive. So looking at our graph, f prime changes from negative to positive right here at negative 3. This tells us that f has a local minimum at x equals negative 3, which is going to lead us to choose answer choice A. For this problem, we've got a graph of f prime, and we're told that the line tangent to f prime at 0 is vertical and that f prime is not differentiable at x equals 2. And we kind of already knew that because this is a cusp, but they're really spelling it out for us just so there, there's no confusions here. So based off this, we want to know which of these five statements below is false. So we're going to analyze each of these and uh, four of these are going to come out true. One of them is going to come out false. So let's start with our first one. f prime exists at x equals 2. Well, to say f prime exists, if you're looking at a graph, you're basically saying, is there a solid dot or a solid line at x equals 2? So here's x equals 2, and we see that we do have a solid dot right there, or at least a solid part of the function. The function exists here. f double prime does not exist here because we have a cusp, and that's non-differentiable. Um, but but it, is, it does exist here. It's continuous at that spot for f prime itself. Uh, so since the graph of f prime is solid there, this is a true statement. And it's not the one we're looking for, so we keep going. Next one, f is increasing on the interval from 2 to 4. 
So here's the interval from 2 to 4. Now, if f is increasing, that means that f prime, its derivative, its slope, should be positive. And we see that, in fact, f prime is positive on the interval from 2 to 4. So that being the case, uh, that means that f itself is increasing on the interval, which means this is a true statement. So we keep going. Uh, next statement, graph of f has no point of inflection at x equals 2. So if you have the graph of f prime, to see where you have a point of inflection for f, you need to see where f prime is changing direction, or I should say reversing direction, changing either from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. Now at x equals 2, the graph of f prime is changing from increasing to decreasing. We have a direction reversal. So that being the case, uh, that means that we do, in fact, have a point of inflection at x equals 2, which means that this is a false statement. Saying we have no point of inflection is false because we do have a point of inflection there. So it looks like choice C is the one we're going to pick. Um, but just to be on the safe side, let's just take a look at these other two real quick. So D, graph, has no point of inflection at x equals 0. And we see here at x equals 0, we're changing from increasing to increasing for f prime. Uh, since there's no reversal of direction for f prime there, there is no point of inflection. So this is a true statement. And then finally, f has a local min at 0. Well, at 0, f prime is changing from negative to positive. So that being the case, that means f does have a local min there. So that means that this is a true statement. So in the end, it is indeed choice C that we will be picking. For this problem, we have the second derivative of some function being graphed out here. And they even told us what the, the function equaled here. So we want to know what values of x gives our graph of f, the original graph, a point of inflection. So if you know about f double prime, you're basically looking for a sign change in f double prime. So we see that f double prime is changing signs according to this graph here at m and also at 0. We do see that f double prime equals 0 over here at point b, at x equals b. Um, but since there's no sign change there, that's not going to give us a point of inflection. We only have points of inflection where f double prime changes signs. So POIs at m and 0, which is going to give us answer choice b. On this one, we're told that y is a function such that y prime is greater than 0 for all x and y double prime is greater than 0 for all x. Based off that, we want to know which of these could be the graph of y equals f of x. So the important points here are that first off, y prime is positive. This tells us that y is going to be increasing. So we can already narrow things down based off of that. Uh, for example, choice C is decreasing. So it can't be choice C. And choice D is it's increasing for part of it, but it's also decreasing. And they said that y prime was positive for all x, not just some x's. Uh, so choice D is also going to have to be eliminated. Um, so the next piece of information is y double prime being positive. So that tells us that y itself is concave up for all x values. Um, so that eliminates choice B, which is concave down for all x values, at least the ones that we can see. And then uh, choice E is concave up for part of the graph, but then it's concave down as well. Only choice A is concave up everywhere that we can see. So that's going to have to be then choice A. For this problem, this free response problem, uh, we're basing a few questions off of this graph here. This is the graph of F prime on the interval from negative 3 to 4. And we're told that we have horizontal tangents at negative 1, 1, and 3. They also gave us the areas bounded by the curve on various intervals as well. So our first part here, they want us to find all x coordinates at which f has a relative minimum and then give a reason. So if we're looking for relative mins and we have the graph of f prime, we're looking for places where f prime changes from negative to positive. Now there's only one place, well actually there's no places that that happens. We change from positive to negative here at negative 2. We change from negative to negative here at 1. Uh, and 4, we don't have enough information. If we kept going, maybe it would change negative to positive, but we don't know that for sure. So uh, since there is 
no place where we are changing negative to positive with f prime. Uh, we have no relative minimum for this function, at least on the interval that they gave us. On this part of the problem, we want to know the intervals where the graph of f, the original graph, is concave down and increasing. So we need to translate these two things in terms of f prime. So if f is concave down, I mean, that means f double prime is negative, but it means f prime itself that we have a graph of is decreasing. And if f is increasing itself, that means that f prime is positive. So we're looking for places where f prime is decreasing and positive at the same time. So taking a look, there's only actually one place on the whole graph where f prime is positive. It's this interval from negative 3 to negative 2. And as luck would have it, we are also decreasing on that interval. So since we are decreasing in positive on that interval from negative 3 to negative 2, for f prime, this tells us that f is going to be concave down and increasing on that same interval. And notice that I'm spelling out my functions here. I'm not saying it or the function. I'm saying f prime is these things. f is these things. Um, so definitely make sure you're specific when you're trying to prove this. For this part of the problem, we want to know all x values on this interval from negative 3 to 4, where f double prime is greater than 0. So they gave us the graph of f prime. Um, if we want f double prime to be positive, we need to see where f prime itself is increasing, since f double prime is the slope of f prime. So we are increasing for f prime on the interval from negative 1 to positive 1, and also over here on the interval from 3 to 4. This tells us that f double prime is positive on those very same intervals. For this free response problem, uh, we have this graph here that some different parts are referring to. And on this graph, between negative 7 and 7, we're told we have horizontal tangent lines at negative 3, 2, and 5. So smooth turnaround, slope of 0 at those points on the graph of y or f prime. So first part here, we want to know for each critical value of f on negative 7 to 7, state whether it's a local, min, max, or neither, and justify your reasoning. So for critical values, let's find out which ones are critical values. Um, so if we want critical values for f, we're looking for places where f prime equals 0 or is undefined. Uh, since there's no undefined spots here, though, we're just looking for places where f prime equals 0. And that happens, we can read this right off the graph, at x equals negative 5, negative 1, and also positive 5. So to see whether these are mins, maxes, or neither, we need to check out what's happening with the sine of f prime. Since f prime is changing from positive to negative at negative 5, x equals negative 5, uh, that tells us that f has a local max at x equals negative 5. And uh, since we're changing from f prime from negative to positive at x equals negative 1, that means f has a local min or a relative min at that spot at x equals negative 1. Finally, since there is no change in sign for f prime at 5, we're positive before and after that critical value. That means that we have uh, no maximum or minimum, no extremum at x equals 5. For this problem, we want to know all values of x between negative 7 and 7, where f is concave down. So there's two ways to think about this, and, and they both have to be true for this to be concave down. One way you could think about it is we're looking for places where f double prime is negative. And uh, the problem with that is that we don't have a graph of f double prime, we have a graph of f prime. So another way to think about this is places where f prime is decreasing, because f prime is decreasing if f double prime is negative. Um, so we see that f prime is decreasing on the interval from negative 7 to negative 3. And also, if we keep going on this interval, it looks like from 2 to 5. But there is one issue, and this is kind of a trick here. We have a vertical tangent at x equals 3. That means that f prime is not differentiable at x equals 3, which is to say that f double prime does not exist at x equals 3. 
So since concave down for f means f double prime is negative, f double prime can't be negative at a place it doesn't exist. So we actually have to exclude 3 from our interval when we're writing the concave down interval. So at the end of the day then, f is concave down from negative 7 to negative 3. From 2 to 3, remember we're leaving 3 out because f double prime doesn't exist there. And then finally from 3 to 5. So trick question there. For this one, we want to know the x-coordinates of all points of inflection for the graph of f and give a reason. So if we're looking for inflection points for f, that means uh, we're looking for places where f double prime changes sign, which is to say we're looking for places where f prime, which is all we know here, changes direction in a, a reversing fashion. So changes from either increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. So we can say that f prime reverses direction. That's how you cover both of those, by saying reverses, at the following spots. So as we follow f prime, we are turning around here at x equals negative 3. And if we keep going, also at x equals 2. And finally, if we keep going, we have one more reversal at x equals 5. So then we can say f has points of inflection at those three spots. And we always want to be thinking in the back of our heads, well, does the original function f actually exist at these spots? We don't have to spell it out. This is one thing you don't have to explicitly put in your proof unless it's false. Um, but the fact that we can see all of this graph of f prime tells us that the graph of f is differentiable across this whole interval. And differentiable includes continuous, which includes existing at all these x values. Um, so the fact that we see f prime means that f exists everywhere here as well.